Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to generate seismic loads according to the equivalent lateral force procedure in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this series of videos, we are showing you three separate workflows that you can use to incorporate all of the requirements of generating your seismic loads in STAD Pro Connect Edition using the equivalent lateral force procedure as described in the IBC. The workflow that we're going to be highlighting in this particular video is to show you how you can incorporate your accidental eccentricities in your model if you're required to do so. So to start this process, we're going to start with a very similar model that we used in the previous video. All of the geometries, properties, specifications, and supports have already been established. Now if we proceed to the loading page within the workflow page control area, I'm going to expand the definitions area and also the load case details section. Now what we're going to see is we're starting with the exact same gravity loads that we had seen in the previous video, including dead load, live load, and storage loads, which were first defined as reference loads through our reference load definitions. What you're also going to notice is that we've incorporated several new load cases for seismic load in the load case details section. For this video, we are going to be incorporating the effects of accidental torsion into our model. We are still analyzing the model for seismic load in the positive and negative X and Z directions, but we're also now going to include the positive and negative effects of your accidental eccentricity. So the process for establishing your loads for this type of scenario is the same as we had seen previously. We're going to start by creating our seismic load definition to define all of our code parameters. Then we're going to move on to define all of our seismic masses within that seismic definition. And then we're going to apply the seismic loads to the model through the load case details section. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to start by highlighting my seismic definitions item within my load case load and definition dialog. And then we'll click on our add button. I'm going to specify that we're using the IBC 2012 ASE 710 code. Now, if you're planning on incorporating your accidental eccentricity, you need to ensure that you select this checkbox to include accidental load directly within the seismic definition. This option will prepare STAD Pro to calculate those additional torsional moments. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and enter the rest of our code parameters as required based on our project location and usage. Once we've entered all of our code parameters, we'll go ahead and click the add button and you can see that now our load is including our accidental option. Once that is done, we'll move on to the second phase of our workflow, which is to define your seismic masses. Again, we're going to go ahead and use our reference loads for our dead load and our storage loads within this load case. This will give STAD Pro the information it needs in order to be able to calculate the effective weight of your structure, in which will in turn be used to calculate the base shear for each of our seismic load cases. Once we're done, we'll click our Add button, and then we'll go ahead and click Close. Now the last step in our workflow is to go ahead and apply the loads to our structure through the Load Case Details section. So let's start with our first seismic load case, which is our seismic load in the positive x direction with the effects of positive eccentricity. So I'm going to highlight this load case, go up to the loading tab in my ribbon toolbar, and click on the load items icon. Here I'm going to select my seismic loads, and I'm going to specify it in the x direction with a factor of positive 1. Next, I'm going to be sure that I select this checkbox to tell the program I want to multiply a factor for accidental torsional moment, and I want the factor to be positive 1 because we're looking at the effects of positive eccentricity 
for this particular load case. Now, before we officially add this load to the model, let's first discuss a few important factors when considering accidental torsional moment for your analysis. The first is how the building dimension will be considered. STAD Pro determines the dimension of the structure to be measured perpendicular to the selected seismic load. The next thing we should understand is how the eccentricity is calculated. By default, the eccentricity is calculated as 5% of the dimension of your building, and a corresponding torsional moment is calculated and applied to each node. So by setting the factor equal to 1.0 here, I'm instructing the program to use the default eccentricity of 5% to determine that moment arm. Finally, STAD Pro will be able to calculate the torsional moment at each node in the model. This will be the magnitude of each torsional moment will be calculated as the product of the moment arm multiplied by the seismic load tributary to each node. Now once we're done entering all of our load item information, we'll go ahead and click the Add button, followed by Close, and we can see that our first load has been created. So now we'll go ahead and continue and populate each of our seismic loads with the appropriate parameters. So let's proceed to our seismic load in the positive x direction with negative eccentricity. So I'm going to highlight my load case, click on the load items icon, and again, go to my seismic loads options. This load is going to be in the positive x direction with the negative effects of eccentricity. So we'll specify a negative one for this factor, which will basically be considered negative 5%. And we'll proceed on for the rest of our seismic load cases. Now that we've established all of our seismic load cases, we are complete with the process of instructing STAD Pro to generate our seismic loads according to the IBC, Equivalent Lateral Force Procedure, with the effects of accidental eccentricity. Now to view any of these loads on screen, we are gonna have to perform an analysis. If I go to the analysis page in my workflow page control area, I can see that a perform analysis command has already been added for this particular model. That being said, I'm now ready to perform my analysis, which I'm gonna do with the run analysis command that's available in the analysis and design tab in the ribbon toolbar. Now, once we're done, we'll go ahead and view our output file. And from here, we can view the calculations for each of our seismic load cases we have in our model. Each of these groups of data will have a um, few key pieces of information, including the time period that was used in the analysis, your CS, and also your design base shear. Now we should have this type of information for all of our analyzed seismic load cases. And for this particular model, we had eight seismic load cases. So all of that information would be provided in the output file. In addition to that, we can also view the loads directly on our screen. To do that, we're going to go to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar, expand our load case details section, and you can select any of the seismic load items that were calculated. If you would like to review the values for each of these point forces or point moments, 
We can view that on screen by going to the Label Settings icon available in the View tab of our Ribbon Toolbar. And we can tell the program we want to display our load values. Now the lateral nodal forces have been determined by STAD Pro, which has distributed the base shear throughout the structure according to the ASCE 710, section 12.8.3. In addition to that, STAD Pro has calculated the additional torsional moments that will result from the accidental option that was selected in the seismic load definition. The lever arm for calculating the torsional moment is obtained as 5% of the building dimension at each floor level perpendicular to the direction of the IBC load. At each joint where the weight is located, the lateral seismic force acting at the joint is multiplied by the lever arm to obtain the torsional moment at that particular joint. Now this completes the process for generating seismic loads according to the equivalent lateral force procedure while incorporating your accidental torsional moments. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.